do today. Uh, not that I needed to. I think that everything contained in this video will be something that could be fairly well figured out from previous videos, but I just thought I'd have give a last few notes and comments on pulling all this together. So this is a more completed underwater scene with uh, landscape material and the caustics uh, as well as some of the rocks. So I use the, again, I use this procedural nature pack that I got off of the Unreal Engine marketplace and I really enjoy using um, for the landscape materials, the grass, and the rocks. So shout out to those guys who made this. Um, if I just wanted to go ahead and note a few things. So the first thing I did was w go ahead and apply a landscape material to the level and get it to a state where um, let's get this lighting built. Get it to a state where um, it wasn't just the default material on the ground. Um, again, it's worth noting that when you do that, you will need to build the layer info for each of these, and it should be set to the blendable, the normal blendable um, version when you set each of those. Um, and then I've just blended in some of the grass and some of the dirt and gone down and done mostly dirt under here with a little bit of the, the grass material. Um, then I've gone in and uh, couple, there's a few things that are worth noting about how I did this. So first of all I shrank the bubbles down because they just seem too large. Um, and then I decided to lay some foliage down. And the first thing I noticed was that foliage instances don't get uh, deferred decals applied to them. So when I laid these rocks down with foliage uh, paintbrush, they didn't get this. So unfortunately, the trick is you're going to have to lay down any underwater rocks manually, unless, of course, you don't care about the deferred decal getting applied to them, which you might not if it's like small pebbles or something like that. Um, but once I laid th these down manually, of course, the decal shows up just fine on them, and you can see there it is against the rock material. Um, looks pretty nice. The grass, obviously, you don't want to lay down manually, so the trick for the grass was um, I went in and I duplicated the grass mesh, and I duplicated the material instances and the underlying material. Um, and I made a dark version and a light version. And what I did was, in the foliage painter, I actually am laying down uh, the gra the water grass, water grass flattened, this is just what I called it, and then water grass dark, so that in between there's actually dark blades of grass. And as it sways back and forth with the natural panner, um, it gets mixed up and it gives the effect that it is actually um, gives the effect that it's actually has the same sort of caustic effect on the grass. So that's worth noting. The other thing that I did was I noticed that the caustic seemed pretty murky on the rocks and stuff after I added everything. Um, either they're murky or they're too faint. So I started looking around, and I, what I realized was that this texture that uh, was used in the caustics didn't have a very high um, contrast ratio. So the whites were kind of gray, and the grays were, or the blacks were not very black; they were dark gray. So what I did is I upped the brightness and the brightness curve. So 1.3 and 1.5. Here's more of what it was originally. And then this one is 1.7. So this is what it was originally, I believe, something along these lines. And I went ahead and I upped the saturation to 2. And then I did 1.5, I think 1.3 for the curve. And then for the RGB curve, I did 1.7. And that gives you like a much black in it. Is it 1.3 and 1.5? I can't even remember what I just said. Yeah, I think that was it. And by doing that, you get a, like a much higher uh, contrast ratio on this than in the previous video. So th that's just a few things um, to note. Other than that, uh, I didn't really change anything. This is it. I, I did go ahead and move out the focal point a little bit on the post-processing volume. And one thing I'm trying to figure out now is the this seems awfully dark. Um, and it, it's because the 
the sunlight shining on it and the auto exposure. So I'm trying to get the auto exposure set to some values and the best I can tell is that lowering this low percent and then messing with the minimum brightness and stuff can really help um, get that but if you do it too much you get the weird caustic coming up through the grass look so you want to do something maybe like 60 and that's going to help. The problem is that the sky is so darn bright um, so if you change that high percent you can actually do that but the sky will be blindingly bright so again you want to do something like 75 I don't even know what the default is, 98 so maybe something like 80 to get a little bit better visibility when you're looking around it's not going to be perfect auto exposure is one of the most tricky things at least for me to get all of these values set to something that is going to be reasonable and not blind you when uh, you're looking up. But this looks, in my mind, this looks pretty good. Of course, all these numbers can be jiggled around to get a value that you want. But overall, I think it looks pretty good. Um, I also made the bubbles a little bit more transparent so that they, or translucent rather, so that they uh, don't show up as strongly. I'll turn off that, all of the editor symbols so you can see. And I think that it looks pretty good. Um, yep, I'll make this real quick. Thanks for watching again. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. Go ahead and give it a second here. Don't cut off the end of the stream.